everyone. So today on Conversations with Kelly, we're going to talk about the art of eating out as a macro tracker, where most people go wrong. And actually, we're just going to dive right into it because why waste any time talking about like, share, and subscribe when all of you guys are already subscribed and you're going to share it with your friends, right? Um, so a lot of us are new to macro tracking. I have been a macro tracker for 13 years. I've been coaching for 10 of those years and I really enjoy flexible dieting because it allows me the opportunity to eat out but still maintain all the results that I've worked so hard for because I know how to do it correctly. And it took a long time to perfect the art of eating out because when I started, I didn't have a coach for the art of eating out. And I have really designed this specifically so that people could use cooked gram value use great estimates when they go out to eat. But some of the problems that we commonly encounter are people not actually planning ahead to eat out where you can go online and just look at some of the data pieces on the menu item. So a lot of the online data for these restaurants is highly inaccurate at about 20 to 30 percent um, over or underestimating because again, they don't measure the values. They just have to have general values for the sake and purpose of having uh, the macronutrient data available for the nutrition basis. So what you can do to be a little bit more accurate is to look at the menu item with the ingredients and also look up a picture on Yelp. Um, a lot of times Yelp ha will have the pictures of some of the similar dishes. And again, I would always kind of leave a little bit of a buffer there just in case, because what you see on Yelp is going to be slightly different from what is actually delivered to you. If you take a photograph of your food and then put your phone away and enjoy your time with your company or enjoying the meal by yourself, whatever you decide to do, um, then you can come home and actually put most of that food into your tracker accurately. So the best way to do that is before you go out to eat, kind of add a placeholder by ingredient. So if it's a chicken sandwich, um, put the chicken breast with rib meat in to your system in MyFitnessPal or whatever tracking device you're using in cooked gram value. Then add the Swiss cheese, you know, again, a slice is usually 28 to 32 grams, add that separately. Add the burger bun or the brioche bun or whatever it is uh, that you're gonna be ordering. And be sure that when you're at the restaurant, you actually order that way or order uh, any ingredients that you're worried about coming on uh, the burger on the side. That way you have control over the portions. Uh, where I see people go wrong is they greatly overestimate and then they leave that information in MyFitnessPal without adjusting it. So if you overestimate and then you see by eyeball that it's not 35 grams of avocado, it looks more like 15 grams, um, you would wanna make that adjustment and then also come home and fill your remaining macros after dinner or lunch, um, whatever it is that you have partaken with that day, with the eating out. The same thing would go for uh, meals where you are actually uh, bringing home take takeout. Um, if you bring home takeout, you will actually have access to your food scale. So you can get a little bit more accurate, even though you didn't prep the food, uh, we don't really know exactly what's in it. Um, you can actually weigh those meals out at home. So let's say you order Chipotle to go and you order the burrito bowl. Well usually the chicken breast at Chipotle is gonna be chicken breast with rib meat or it'll be a chicken breast with thigh meat mixed in with it. And a lot of times you'll see that they have oils added into the mix. So if it's cooked on a skillet or cooked at a fast food restaurant, you'll want to accommodate for just a little bit of oil. So I would probably put one or two grams of canola oil or vegetable oil in because usually at restaurants, that's what they use. If your plate is really oily, then maybe two or three grams of oil for every 100 grams of protein that you're eating. So if you got a lot of protein, um, especially in takeout, then I would probably put two to three grams per 100 gram serving, which again, will be about the size of the palm of your hand, okay? So when you're out and you're looking at portions, especially at places like Mexican food, Italian food, um, the size of your thumb is usually about one ounce. Uh, the size of your fingertips is usually about a cup of carbohydrates. Again, um, you're going to be moderately off, but when it's spread out on your plate, a cup usually does look like about the size of your fingertips, if you will. And then, of course, your portion of protein will probably look like the palm of your hand.
if you've got a bigger hand, I've got really long fingers, um, maybe just modify slightly. And when you're looking at cooked gram value, uh, most of you are pretty familiar with cooked gram value because you're actually measuring a lot of your food and logging probably most of your food, if not all of your food in cooked gram value at home. If you are a macro tracker and you haven't merged yet to cooked gram value, that is gonna be very helpful when you go to eat out because you will have a lot of the things that you commonly enjoy in your tracker. Where it can be a little tricky is when you're borrowing foods uh, that you normally eat at home. Take for instance, a tortilla or a mission large tortilla. A lot of times uh, when you go to an authentic Mexican restaurant, the mission tortilla is going to be very off. So you might look for something that has just a little bit more fats and carbs and borrow that data for a medium to large flour tortilla rather than using what you used at home where you have control over the amount of fat and carbs that would be in that item. So that probably isn't going to be a like for like exchange at a Mexican restaurant. We have to be a little bit more realistic with it and use your MyFitnessPal um, search menu to try to find an authentic flour tortilla or homemade flour tortilla would be more realistic if you're out to eat. So those are some common problems that we have with eating out. Um, a lot of times uh, just researching that menu item ahead of time, putting in what you can see in the ingredients portion on that menu item is gonna be very helpful. Again, if you have already measured salsa at home, it's gonna be a lot easier to measure salsa by eyeball when you're at a restaurant. If you see the condiment containers, those are usually two tablespoons. Um, so if you are kind of reduced to using tablespoons as a measure um, or you have to estimate with tablespoons, you'll know uh, that those traditional um, silver condiment containers or the little two tablespoon condiment containers are typical. A lot of times at authentic Mexican restaurants, you'll get a dish and that is typically either like half of a cup or again, it would be four tablespoons in most cases. Um, a lot of times that's where people grossly overestimate or underestimate. In our coaching system, we have what's called a guess and check system in our voice application for our clients. So if you're not seeing great results with macro tracking, and again, this is gonna go out on YouTube, um, and you are not a part of our coaching system and you feel like you need to have a good 90 day, you know, full rehab of your macros, please reach out to us. Um, our link will be in the description below for our 90 day coaching hardcore session. Uh, most people do decide to stay a little bit longer so that they can uh, practice the art of eating out with their coach, um, at least through the first maybe six, seven or eight times out, and then you will have it down like an expert. Um, but the art of eating out can be a little tricky in the beginning. So just remember to pre-plan as much as possible. And if you go out to eat last minute and you know you have it in your budget, make sure that when you get home from eating out that you fill your remaining macros because the goal every day is to hit calorie balance. And that means hitting the same macros every day because if your macros are the same or within your coaching ranges, you are going to be very close to calorie balance every day. Um, if you don't quite hit those and you come home, Make sure you top those off when you get home because what you're doing when you go out to eat is an estimate. Try to get that as close as humanly possible to correct and then fill your remaining macros so that you are at calorie balance. And that is gonna warrant the best results with macro tracking, especially if you're gonna be a little bit more social like during the holidays or during certain months where maybe you're gonna pause your fat loss mentality and move more into a maintaining or maintenance mentality uh, with eating out. It's very helpful to be able to shift in and out of social timeframes and not feel like you are on or off your plan, rather in your plan. And with that, I'm going to close and I hope you guys got a lot of value out of this today. We'll be back here again with another conversation with Kelly on how to meet your macros more accurately.